Thanks very much, Andrew. Hi. So, my name's Fred. I head up the analytics team here at Space Ape. Been here about two and a half years now. And today I'm going to talk to you about promotions and targeting promotions in games. Um, it's quite fitting, actually, because today is Cyber Monday, which I think most of you, most of you know. Did anyone pick up any, any Black Friday deals? Any Cyber Monday deals? None of you? Wow. Okay. I got, I got myself a um, nice PS4 game, real cheap, so happy about that. Um, right, so let's, let's talk about how we, how we do that kind of stuff. Okay, so I'm going to take you back through the history of Space Ape. I'm going to talk about how we've um, done this kind of thing in the past, what we're doing right now, and, and what the plans are for the future, how we're going to change things. So, Cast your minds back three years. We've launched Samurai Siege. Uh, it's a game, quite similar to Clash of Clans, a build a battle game. And we, we want to monetize this game, obviously. So how do we do it? We've just got your regular shop page, basically. It's quite a small picture, so I don't think you can all see this, but there's a selection of different price points here of diamonds you can buy in game, it's a premium currency. The cheapest one's about $5, the top one's about $100. And there's a small um, promotion where if you buy the top one, you get about 30% extra diamonds uh, compared to the bottom one. So there's a bulk discount offered for higher spend. So this is pretty familiar to most people. People have been doing this kind of thing in games for a long time, dating back to Facebook games and, and that kind of stuff. And a lot of games now still rely on this as their main way of monetizing. So uh, an example I'd say is Pokemon Go. This is, this is basically how they made their money. They've got a shop, you go in and you can buy stuff. Okay, so, shop. Why is the shop good? Um, there's multiple price points offered, so it means how much you want to spend, you're catered for. If you only want to spend $5 or $100, we will have something for you here. So that's good. Um, we've also got that bulk buy discount I was talking about. This is going to encourage some people to spend up a bit. You'll make slightly more money, so that's good. Um, but we have found a way with, the, with the shop thing on the downside is your average transaction size tends to stay around the same level. So guys will come in, they might spend $10, the next time they come, they're, they're probably going to spend $10 again, and it, it doesn't tend to go up much over a customer's lifetime, is what we found. The other thing with our shop is it's quite tucked away in the HUD. It's, it's three or four button presses, so it's actually quite, quite hidden away. So you're probably leaving a, bit of, a little bit of money on the table there as a result. So, uh, one thing I want to mention in passing actually, uh, I used to work uh, for a company called Plumby who did uh, slot machines. Slot machines have a crazy high bulk buy discount. If you look here, the bottom price point is three dollars, and you get one hundred and fifty thousand coins. If you buy the top one, it's hundred dollars. Okay, that's thirty x. You get one hundred million coins. So you're getting one hell of a bulk discount on this. Uh, casinos have a big advantage though, because what tends to happen is people bet proportionally to their balance. So they can afford to be real generous because a guy who comes in and buys this hundred million. They're just going to still bet, you know, two, two, three percent of that every spin. So, great, it's great for them. They can, they can be super generous, and they don't have the same issue that we'd have. If we offered this kind of generosity in our games, we'd burn all the content in the game at once, and it'd be a disaster. But anyway, good for casinos. So, moving on. This is something we launched into Samurai Siege um, soon after launch as a way of improving monetization. It's what we call time limited bundles. Okay, so the way these work, you'll log into the game. And at some point during your session, this bundle will pop up. And it will say, hey, I've got a special offer for you. So the example here, you're getting 3,750 diamonds, you're getting some onyx, and you're also getting Sun Dragon's Town. But you've got to buy it in the next six hours, or it's going to go away. And what we found is that these really increase the amount of revenue we're making in the game. There's a couple of reasons for that, so um, let's go through these. Um, there's the EV, which is much higher than the regular shop. So Andrew touched on this. This is what we call estimated value. So normally, if you spend this $20 amount in the game, you're only going to get those 3,700 diamonds. That's it. With this bundle, you're spending the same amount. It's $20 again. But this time, you're getting the diamonds, and you're getting the onyx, and you're getting the sun tower. And when you add it all up, it's worth much more than what you get in the shop. It's about 200% EV, this bundle. And, and that's very appetizing to play. So they're much more likely to buy it. Um, the other thing with these as well, obviously I'm talking about the time limit, with the timer ticking down, there's there a slight pressure as well, we say, hey, you've got to buy it now. It's kind of obvious, but it works. People, people buy for that result. And the other thing which Andy touched on as well is you can theme these and tie them into live events, which is something that we specialise in here. And when you theme the bundle with the event, it works really well, there's a kind of spin-up effect. So if the bundle's themed with the event, you might have, for example, in Transformers, 
some, some fuel cells which let your bots battle more. You might have some new bots that you can get. And if there's an event going at the same time, you're like, hey, you can get a new bot, you can level them up during the event, and we're going to give you fuel cells so that you can keep using the bot during the event. So it's a real win for the pets. They're like, great, I'm going to buy that. Um, so here, this is similar to the graph that Andrew showed. You can see these big spikes. The, this is when we've run the event and we've had a theme bundle that ties in with it. And those are the biggest spikes you'll see during that six month period. Really works well. What's interesting, um, I gave a version of this talk a few months ago. Um, sorry for the guys who've, who, who've heard it before, but I've added a few little bits. And one thing that's interesting is back then, I cited alongside Pokemon Go, Clash Royale as another game which only has a shop and doesn't do time limited bundles. But between then and now, they've actually added them into the game. Um, so I've got a few examples here. It's got a really cool UI. Basically, um, you log into the game. There's this uh, special offer available thing which dings up and it colours it in yellow. It's super eye-catching. And when you click on it, it takes you to the shop page and it zooms in on, on, the, on the bundle. And these bundles are really good EV. I don't know how many of you guys play Clash Royale, but here for $5, you're getting $5 worth of coins straight off the bat, $5 worth of gems, and a magical chest, which is probably worth like another $5. So you're getting 300%, 400% EV. Amazing offer. Um, so these are awesome. I mean, I'll, I'll admit myself, like I played Clash Royale at launch, I spent a little bit of money to level my cards up, and then I like, kind of stopped spending. And when they started doing these bundles, man, they're quite all of them. Like they're, they're really good value, really eye-catching, really great. Um, you can see the effect, like if we look at Appani, it was starting to slip out of top grossing Clash Royale. This is looking at US. Um, the top line across the top means you're at number one in the grossing ranks. You can see round about here in August, they're slipping out of it. US overall, you know, they're down to like 10, 15 plates. They launched the bundles round about here, bang, they're back to number one. So it really worked for them. Uh, so that's an example of time limited bundles and, and how powerful they can be. Right. So I've talked about these already, basically the, the high EV and the time limit is a real, really good incentive to play. The bundle pops, so we get around that problem of the shop being tucked away. It, it's right there in the customer's face, they can see it, they don't want to buy it, they don't have to search it out. Um, one danger with these things is people can end up sort of trained to wait for bundles. And I, I do this in Clash Royale now. I won't buy from the shop anymore unless I really, really have to, because I know that at some point I'm going to see another bundle and that's, that's what I'm going to buy with gems and that kind of stuff. Um, and as I mentioned before, content burn issues. If you go a bit wild with your EV, you're going to burn through your content faster. That's, that's the simple fact of it. Um, yeah, and it's best when combined with a live event. So if you theme at the event, you're going to get the spin-up effect. Great, you're going to make loads more money. Okay, so time-limited bundles. We're going to come forward a bit more in time now for the Rival Kingdoms launch. We've been talking about Siege so far. And oh, I've actually shown a picture from Transformers, but they're in that as well. I want to talk to you about timeline bundles. So this was an innovation that we came up with for Rival Kingdoms um, early, uh, halfway through last year. So what happens with this? Players see a rotating group of bundles, and they're targeted. So this is something we're talking about targeting content. These bundles, we'll look at how much you've spent previously, and we'll try and offer you something in your kind of hitting range where, OK, you spent 10 bucks before. You can probably spend 10 again. Maybe you spend 20. So how does this work? It's a bit of a wall of text here, but what I've got here are different timelines for different spender signals. The top timeline there is non-spenders, so if you've never spent in the game, you're going to see this rotating selection of bundles. It starts off with a $20 launch uh, bundle. It shows you some 20s. We, we normally start higher and then go down, because you, you want to try with a high price point just in case. Uh, and then it drops down, so you're like, you don't want to buy the 20? Okay, I'm going to show you the 10. If you don't want that, you know, maybe we go down to five. And these will rotate maybe once a day, once every three days, something like that. It's just going to rotate through these. And we've got other timelines here. So there's one for low spenders. If you spent $5, you're no longer going to see the, the non-spender timeline. You're now going to see this, this $5 to $10 low spender timeline. And it's, it's targeted around your range. So we've got stuff at $5, 20 10 that kind of thing. If you've spent $40, you're going to see slightly bigger ones. You're going to see 40s. You're going to see some hundreds in there. And if you spent $100, well, we're going to show you a load more $100 bundles because we want you to buy them. So that's cool. Um, so, timeline bundles, it's another wall of text, sorry. Um, why are these good? So, they're much better upselling than single price points. When I was showing you those time limited bundles before, generally they're just going to be a one size fits all. So, you're going to see the $20 bundle, and maybe you only want to spend 10, so you don't buy it. Or maybe you wanted to spend 40, so yeah, you buy it, but you could have, you could have bought 40. Um, what we also did with this is they, we tested this with Transformers. When we launched Transformers, we tried it without these and with these as a, as a split test, as an A-B test. 
and it doubled the amount of ARPU we make on the game. Like, they're super effective at increasing ARPU. Um, the other thing as well is you don't have to do these instead of time limited bundles. You can do them at the same time. It's not like a mutually exclusive thing. So these are your kind of bread and butter promotions that the customer's going to see throughout the week. And at the weekend, boom, you hit them with a big time limited bundle. So you don't have to do one or the other. You can do both if you want. <laughs> the danger of these things is, oh, one other benefit actually, which I'm not sure on the side, but it's, it's like minimal curation once you've done the initial setup. So with the time limited bundles, someone's going to have to actually do the art, design it, work out the EVs. Like, there's quite a lot of work involved in setting them up, and you've got to do it week in, week out. With these, there's a lot of work up front, fine. Once you've done it, it's done. And then that's going to keep you going for quite a long time because you've got all the different timelines, all the different bundles. It's going to cycle through them. And it's, it, it doesn't need that constant curation. So it's quite efficient. Uh, same in terms of like downsides, it's, it's very similar to sign limited. You, you can cannibalize um, shop sales, and there's a danger of content burn. So that's timelines. Um, oh, one really small thing I'll just mention in passing. When we started doing these, we targeted it based on your max spend. And at some point, we thought, is max spend actually the best metric to start on? The, the highest you've ever spent out. And we looked at the correlation of mean spend, median spend, all that kind of stuff. And it turns out mean spend is better, basically. So what's interesting, we only found this out quite recently, but we're, we're doing an A-B test right now to test if this is actually right. So we're, we're testing mean spending as max spend, but results will be in next week. Uh, OK, so we're going to jump into the future now. So what next, beyond all this stuff? Machine learning targeted bundles. So. This is where we're going to use machine learning to even better target bundles, basically. So this, this is all about the targeted content, which we were talking about before. So we're going to have all these different bundles that we have in the timelines. $10 battle bundle, $40 character bundle, whatever. There's a lot of different bundles we can serve up. Lots of different combinations of, co different combinations of content and price. Uh, how's this going to work? So we're going to score each bundle on the chance of you buying it. So we're going to say with a $10 battle bundle, you have a 5% chance of buying that. With a $40 one, you've got a 1% chance, and so on and so forth. And then we can work out what has the best value in terms of uh, what we should serve you, just by multiplying the chance of you buying it by the amount of revenue it will generate. And we pick the one where we think we're going to make the most money. Um, the other thing we'll need to do as well is add a random element. So a lot of the time with targeting like this, you've got to be careful you don't purely just go for the recommendation. Because you might end up with a system just showing the same bundle again and again and again because it's decided that's the one you want to buy. And the customer's not going to like that. It's going to feel weird. So you need to have some kind of randomization in there in order to prevent that happening. Um, yeah, so that is the future of what we're going to be doing on bundles. And I think that takes me to the end of my talk. Thank you very much. Any questions? Okay. Uh, hi, thanks for your presentation. I have a question on the frequency of sales. So do you have some, I don't know, advice? And uh, We talk about cannibalization, and this is uh, always the risk of doing too many sales. Do you have some takeaways from that? Sure. So one thing I'll say on frequency, and this is something we learn from rival kingdoms going into Transformers is you want to make sure that you have very uh, compartmentalized bundles in terms of what you put in them. So a mistake we made with rival kingdoms is you put premium currency in every single bundle. And it led to massive inflation in the game. Because people would see a bundle, they're buying these bundles quite regularly. And they'd see a bundle where it's something they wanted, like an ancient or something, they'd buy it. And they all, because all these all had premium currency, and even if they didn't need the premium currency, they'd be getting some anyway, because it was part of the bundle. And they'd end up building up, building up, building up. And it caused a real problem where customers had too much premium currency, and that really cannibalized our normal shop. With Transformers, we can afford to uh, run promotions more regularly in terms of the frequency, because we've done this compartmentalizing. And it means that we don't have the same problem where players are accumulating stuff they don't necessarily need, but just bought because it's in the bundle. So if you buy a character bundle, it's just got character stuff in. There's no premium <laughs> currency in there. If you buy a battle bundle, it's just got battle stuff in. So you can afford to run the bundles more frequently. With the, um, the timelines which I was showing you, it changes depending on which segment you're in. 
So if you're in the non-spender one, that's only going to cycle, say, a couple of times a week. If you're in the very top one, that's going to cycle multiple times a day, because those guys spend more frequently. So um, in terms of the frequency, I'd say um, base it on what spender segment the players fit into, but you can go up to multiple promotions in a day if it's a very intense spender, down to like one a week if it's a non-spender. Hi. Um, do you ever drop players back down the timeline segments if they, you find they're not spending? Or have you tried that? That's, that's an interesting question. Um, at the moment, we only do it in the top segment. So in that big spender one, if you um, go two weeks without spending much, you'll drop down into what we call high spender two, which is it's, it's just going to drop the price points down a little bit because you've flown too close to the sun kind of thing. You're like, okay, I bought the $100 that one time, but dude, I don't want to buy another $100. So um, you can put down from high spender, that's the only one. Obviously, why would you not do that for the other segments? So it's something we're looking to implement, we just haven't got around to doing it yet. Question for me. Um, the, you were, you, when you were talking about the rocket age, the machine learning bit, you said a percentage of chance to spend. Yep. How do you arrive at that number for every unique user? That's a good question. So I was thinking mostly in terms of the price point. So we can look at um, a player's historical purchases and then look to see what the most likely price point is that they buy next. Uh, and that's actually, we've started building this. So this is, this is, this is how we're doing it, basically. We're using the nearest neighbors model. And we can see that if you've spent $5, then $5, then $10, then $20, then $20, you'll then have, based on historical data, we can say, okay, the chance of you now buying 10 is 12%. The chance of you buying 100 is only 2%. The chance of you buying 5 is 5% or whatever, like we, we base it purely on the historicals and we go off that to decide uh, what the chances you can buy with those different price points. So it's as simple as that, to be honest. Do you think that there's an assumption that you're basically, that every player moves up a very smooth gradient of price spend? No, I don't think it would work like that in practice. Um, I think you'll, you'll have a real mix, basically. I think most players have a natural spend point that they're comfortable with. Um, there will be some players who will increase their spending as they get into the game more. So to begin with, they might come in, just drop some money to try the game out. And if they really get into it, they really love the Transformers or whatever, and they're like, this game's great. I'm, I'm actually willing to spend a bit more in the game now because I'm invested in it. So, um, but then for every guy like that, there might be another guy who's kind of, eh, and he'll spend five, five or 10 here and there, but he's, he's probably not gonna spend much more than that over his lifetime. So it's a, I think it's a real mix, to be honest. Okay. And Martin, sorry, one more question. Just sure. Uh, so let's say if someone, starts the game, just like in your previous example, someone starts the game at a $5 price point, yep. likes the game, decides to spend the 99 Yep. How do you migrate them all the way from 5 up to 99 and how do you do it quickly in a way that you're not serving them the $5 bundles? Yeah, okay, so basically that's something which is missing at the moment because on the non-spender timeline, I don't think you can go straight in at 100 So you would have to go like via the mid-spend, so you'd spend Whatever the, so say, you, say you're a $100 guy, you come in on the low spender one, or on the non-spender, and the, I think the highest we show you on that's like 20 or 40, something like that. And you're going to buy that one, because you're like, well, it's not 100, but fine. Or you, you could spend 100 in the shop, actually, which is another way that we deem you as being a high spender. But let's say you don't want to buy from the shop. So you buy a 40, at that point you're going to go on to the medium spender, and in the medium, the first one we show you is 100. But you're right, you're not, it's going to take one, two steps, like that. You could try chucking some hundreds in the non-spender timeline, potentially. That's something you could test. Um, yeah, I guess it depends how many guys do you think are going to convert their non-spenders to spending at that level straight off the bat. But yeah, there could be, there could be some mileage in there. Hi, um, I have a question about balancing uh, kind of buying time versus buying content. Um, so for time you can have like some diamonds that you just use to, to, to speed up certain processes, let's say. And on the other hand, you have content that's maybe more interesting. And over the years, how, how, how like, do you have some ideas of what's better? So, purely from my own experience, most recently with Transformers, the content sells much better. So, if we look at the breakdown of our revenue between skips or between buying bots, we make way more money from selling bots. That's, that's what really makes people get the wallet sell. If you've got a bundle with Optimus Prime in, that's going to make you way more money than buying skips or buildings or something like that. Yeah, hello. Uh, you said about uh, bundles, there's like normal bundles and um, 
he said, was it, was it said that people would be playing the game, and if they're doing really good in it, they could unlock like a special bundle, and then they actually pay like extra money, but they'll get a lot of stuff out of it, but randomised. That's pretty, not randomised, but that's exactly how Clash Royale does it. So in Clash Royale, when you level up an arena, that's when you get the special offer. Uh, they also do event themed bundles, but that, that seems to be their main one. I think it works really well, because you've, you've leveled up, you're excited, you're like, yes, I've unlocked the new arena, and they're like, hey buddy, well done on getting to that new arena, how about you buy this bundle? And you're like, yeah, sure. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 Cool. Um, so, sorry, do we have one more question? Cool. Um, so we're going to have a little break now. Uh, thanks, Fred. I think the main takeaway from this, uh, for the... Uh, Supercell guys in the audience is make a bundle specifically designed to identify a thread easy and you'll make a lot of money. Um, so I think the uh, a lot of questions, uh, a lot of people ask me like where do you hire for these sorts of roles um, uh, especially with earlier stage companies and and I think um, there's a lot of DNA with, with uh, a lot of shared DNA of what we're doing and what the gambling industry did five, ten years ago especially real money. I think. Fred, you worked at Betfair for a while, and, and a lot of the, uh, the tactics that, that, um, that worked there made their way to the social casino, where there's few, fewer variables to interact with, and the games sort of live or die more on the in-game CRM and the targeting um, stuff. So, um, so that's a, really a segue to our next speaker, uh, Kate from Product Madness. I think Dan subbed out. Um, but uh, we're going to, uh, going to talk about that after the... Um, uh, after the break, it's some really interesting stuff uh, that, that they're doing in, the, in this area. Uh, and then after that, it'll be Mitchell uh, talking about our tools for Rival Kingdoms. We'll give you a live demo.